Oh. Hey chatters, it's time for another fireside chat. Uh, it's June, as of recording this, mid-June. And it's kind of time to take things to the next level. Over the last several months, I've been posting a video almost every week on Obsidian in building your second brain or your digital garden or whatever you want to call it. I'm really hopeful that you've been taking it somewhat seriously and dumping everything that you can in there because at least now personally I'm at a stage where we can start on the next phase of this project. So if you haven't looked at any of those videos Please do. I'll put them down in the comments, the playlist. The idea here, though, is that we are trying to build our own personal AI assistant. My concern with the world right now is that you have these major players putting out these incredible models, but it's their vision of those models trained on a lot of different data a lot of which was taken, and they're asking for forgiveness, not permission. But you know what? I honestly can't blame them for that. We are somewhat complicit in this. In the age of social media, we've been more than happy to more or less just give away our data in exchange for the services instead of having to pay for them. But now we're entering a new phase. We know better, right? And so it's really important that we are making this luscious cultivated digital garden and that will then be the basis for this personal ai that we want to build together what this means is that we need to develop a pipeline of our data and use that to fine-tune a model that already exists now this is important because new models will come out every day and so what we want to build is this data set of our information, our garden, which will continue to be built upon. And then when the next model comes out that's open sourced and that we can tune, all we're doing is using the data that we've already accumulated in addition to whatever data we've gotten between now and then and use that to fine tune the model. I've never done this before. I don't really know what I'm doing, but you know what? I see it within reach and we're getting to a point now where I really do believe anyone can do this. Anyone can take their information, put it through a pipeline that we're going to develop together to generate synthetic data based on that information, and then use that data to fine tune your model. Not OpenAI's, not Google's, not Microsoft's, not anyone's, but yours, using your data. What I'm aiming for and what we need to do to start this process is actually some coding. I don't know how to code, but I've been spending the last couple of months learning how to ask these large language models the right questions as well as to use tools like VS Code so that even though I'm not really coding, I can use the large language models to code for me and have a back and forth conversation to essentially fix any errors and get it to whatever I want to do. This has been a grind, a super grind. I've wasted a lot of time figuring this out. My hope is to bootstrap you in this. So I don't want you to face the time sinks that I faced and I want to empower you to go through this process, to take your sovereign data, turn it into synthetic data that can be used to train a model, and then training that model so that it can be yours and eventually run it locally. That might be a little bit of an issue. To run local models, you need really a GPU, a graphic processing unit at the moment. These can get quite expensive. Right now, I built my own computer 
And just for some of the stats, as of right now, what we have is an AMD 9 CPU. We have a 3090 RTX NVIDIA GPU, which has 24 gigabytes of VRAM. And then I have not much RAM, like 32 gigabytes of RAM. The most important part being the GPU right now. And what you want to look at is how much VRAM it has. This is what we offload in terms of those computations to actually run the model. So what does this mean? It means that in this first phase, you're probably like most people are not going to have the money to afford that. And you're not going to be able to really run these local models yet. But as always, my mantra is we want to be aiming for where the technology is going, not where the technology is. At this point in time, we have companies like Grok, G-R-O-Q, not G-R-O-K, like X and Twitter and our friendly Elon Musk, but many others who are developing chipsets that are specifically made to do what's called inference, which is that is when it's generating the text, right? So we're going to see in this next generation of computers that pretty much every single one is going to have some sort of local chip specialized for running inference and for running these models. So what we want to do is we want to build the model and build the pipeline and get used to that so that when these new computers come out, when these new chips come out and it's affordable, you're already a step ahead. You already got it down. You have your data, you have everything trained, and you can run that model locally. It will be yours, and you can continue, like I said, just taking the data you've already built up in terms of that synthetic data that is using the kernel of your data to be generated to continue to build upon it and fine-tune the next model that comes out. This is how we're going to do it. First, we got to learn GitHub. GitHub is where a lot of code is hosted. It's kind of like the collaborative Google Drive for code. So we're going to learn how to use that effectively. The next is we're going to learn how to use VS Code. This is like I said, it's this design space for your code. It's where you write and run the code. And then we're going to generate a ton of synthetic data together using some open source code that I have developed for you. And then we're going to learn how to fine tune a model. As of recording this, I've only gotten up to the point of generating the synthetic data. And even that right now, I'm still trying to work with and tune and figure out how best to do it. The idea here is I want to make this as configurable as for you as possible. So again, this isn't me imposing my will onto you in terms of what you want the model to do, but to give you some structure. And so what that means is there's going to be opportunities to use whatever model you want, including local models, to generate the synthetic data. It also means that you're going to have full control over the prompts that are being used to generate the synthetic data. So this is the plan. So we're going to be taking a little bit of a break from Obsidian for now so that we can get you up to speed here. And then I'm excited to have you on this journey, and I'm hoping you can contribute too. Because again, or at least what I'm trying to show is, I have no idea what I'm doing to some extent. I do conceptually, but then when you get to level deeper, I don't really know what I'm doing. I don't know how to code. But being assisted by AI, we can. AI could very well replace humans. But the only way it can replace humans is if we design it and build it to replace humans and we use it to replace ourselves. Instead, what I am offering is a vision of the future where we are enhanced by our own personal AI companions, where we are not being replaced, but we are being empowered to make our vision come true, to be the orchestrators of our own future, and not to have that dictated to us by algorithms, particularly, right, again, which are being developed by these big companies which no fault of their own, they're in a capitalist system, they need to make money to survive. But that changes the incentives for them and therefore the impact on us. And so we need to be able to balance. The chatters, I'm so excited to have you on this journey with me. Let's get it done. Let's build our own models. We're going to figure this out. Let's build the future that we all want to live in. Thanks for listening. Let's get started.